uh, various uh, distance courses uh, in uh, uh, also library educators courses for uh, different people. And uh, today in this session, we are going to uh, understand uh, one aspect of the classroom uh, library, that is the potential of a poetry corner in the classroom and how it can support children's growth in uh, literacy and to build a community of readers. Uh, I think libraries are uh, one of the greatest institu institutions and we need to have more of these public libraries in um, uh, India to make um, uh, students uh, learn uh, reading and uh, reading should become a habit for uh, our children and adults both. So uh, we look forward to uh, Jane uh, and her session. Uh, Jane, would you like to uh, start now? Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, I should begin by thanking uh, Poonam Sachide for organizing this and for Ruchi for hosting it and all the people involved in the School Synergy workshop series. Um, so today we're going to be looking at poetry in the uh, poetry corner in a classroom library. Poetry is not everybody's favorite subject. And sadly, many people have bad memories of learning poetry at school, poems they didn't connect to, poems they were going to be tested on, they had to memorize. So many people grow up feeling that poetry is more or less a no-go area. Um, there are many definitions of poetry, but uh, fire in my head, uh, a time of attention, a form of attention. But the one that I connect to is poetry as a splash of words. A splash of words gives one the sense of being woken up, seeing things again, a shock, a surprise. So. Today we'll be looking at and listening to a splash of words. Splash of words is a phrase coined by the poet Louis McNeese. And what I'm trying to think about today is how poetry can be different from the way it's taught in the classroom in the lesson time. Poetry that can be enjoyed treasured, shared, remembered. And the classroom library can offer that kind of a space, an open space. So could we start the PPT, Deepa? Yes, surely, I'll just start it. So a very important aspect of a classroom library in whatever subject is the idea of choice. And that's something that children don't often experience in a classroom situation. Could we move to the next slide? A choice of what to read, of how to read, of when to read, and who to read with, and even where to read. So uh, freedom to choice of what to read is the freedom to browse and to choose, not to have to read a text that's prescribed or judge what is judged suitable for you whether it's your age or your reading ability, but the choice is yours to read the whole of a book, to read the part of a book, maybe not to read it again, and possibly not even to read at all. That's something that a library offers, which the normal course of a classroom lesson doesn't. A choice where to read. Um, you can read slowly and you can read 
uh, you can read outside, you can read inside, you can read at home, you can read at school. And also important, who to read with. You can read alone and independently. You could read with a friend and you could also read in a small group. And also you have the choice of who you want to share a, a poem a book with. So what's special, could we move to the next slide? What's special about a poetry corner? Poetry corner can be a very, not a complicated thing. It can be quite simple, just a couple of uh, desks or shelves or a board is quite a wall space, is enough to create a really interesting poetry corner which has many elements. The possibility of including poems of different languages, of different from different cultures, and all manner and forms of poetry, riddles, jokes, limericks, nonsense poems, tongue twisters, all these can be part of a library. Poems that capture a moment, poems that make familiar things unfamiliar and unfamiliar things familiar a poem that helps us to look at things. There can be, can be, uh, yes, there can be displays of poems around themes, from the sky to limericks, from poem, favorite poems chosen from anthologies that are provided, poems that don't rhyme. So an exposure to all kinds of poems. It's very important that this area doesn't just gather dust. It should be an area that must change and be added to. And most, most importantly, that children feel a sense of ownership to add their own poems or to choose a favorite poem that they Hello. Hello, Jane. Uh, you are frozen. We can't hear you anymore. I think her connection is having a problem. I think there's a problem. Just wait, we'll uh, check. Poonam, can you call her? I'll just check with her. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we can uh, uh, just uh, have from the participants, they can reply on chat or uh, they can unmute also. Yeah, I can see Jane is back. Yeah. Jane, can you unmute yourself and uh, can we check if we can hear you? Okay. Yeah. We can hear you. It's raining and cloudy here, so there may be some problems. But the poetry corner can also be a space where children don't have to give answers, but can also ask questions. For example, you could put a poem up on the wall and invite children to put a stick or a pin, a Questions round the round the poem. Could we move to the next slide? Deepa, can you put These it in slideshow mode? Some of the more? kind of questions that children might like to think about. What are the memorable images for you? Uh, do you have any questions you want? Yeah, so do you have any questions around the poem? 
Can you see the questions on the slide? Which words or images are uh, memorable for you? Does this poem remind you of someone you met or something that happened to you? Do you have any doubts about the poem? Do you connect this poem with another poem? I think Jane was uh, planning to share some poem and then uh, share this conversation, share these questions with you. Okay, how many of you have actually taught a poem uh, with uh, students in the classroom? If you can have a, uh, maybe you can just raise hand or just type yes in the chat. Jane, you're back. Yeah. I'm meanwhile trying yes. to continue the conversation for you. Yeah. Yeah, please do, because this may happen again. <laughs> can we close the PPT a moment? So poems are meant to be heard, not only read, but heard. So I want to begin by reading a poem to you. It's a poem by Miroslav Holub. Go and open the door. Maybe outside there's a tree or a wood a garden or a magic city. Go and open the door. Maybe a dog's rummaging. Maybe you'll see a face or an eye or the picture of a picture. Go and open the door. If there's a fog, it will clear. Go and open the door. Even if there's only the darkness ticking. Even if there's only the hollow wind. Even if nothing is there. Go and open the door. At least there'll be a draft. Could we open the PPT? Deepa, uh, can you start minute. the PPT again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just do that. Give me a minute. If there is an issue, just let me yeah, yeah. know. I'll help you. I didn't give the title of this poem, so maybe you can suggest a title. Uh, whether I think the poem will come up in a moment, you could just look at it and suggest what you think the poem should be called, even if by chance you know the poem. Think of another title of your own. So there you can see this poem. Uh, can you all suggest titles for these poems? You can do it on chat or if you want to unmute and speak, that, that is also okay. We uh, do have a few uh, suggestions. Uh, should yes. I read it out for you? Uh, yes. The Door, yes. uh, Possibilities. Another one by Roshni is Open Our Imagination. Uh, Varun Gupta has written In and Out. Uh, Ganesh Chandra has written freedom. And uh, yeah, so these are the suggestions. Okay, Nikhar has written opportunities. Uh, Ubema has written unlock. Yashodra has written go move. <laughs> yeah, any further suggestions? <laughs> Okay. The other side of door, uh, your view, take risk and go out, look outside, go out now. I think these are some of the wishes that they must be feeling right now. <laughs> go out now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. The unseen heaven. The unseen heaven. Darkness to light. Keep the door shut. Question mark. <laughs> okay. The lockdown. <laughs> Experience <laughs> the unknown. Explore. Inquest with three exclamation marks. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful response. And so easy to do, just not to put the title. It brings out all kinds of possibilities. I'm not going to tell you, but only one of them was actually the, um, the uh, name that the poet gave but so many uh, ideas. Another one was possibilities, somebody said. Uh, beauty of the world. Actually, these titles have captured in a way the essence of the poem. And I love the way people have related to their moment now, lockdown, frustration at not being able to go out perhaps. So, a poem is something to connect to from where you are now with all your experience in the past, in the future, and where you want to go also. So just spend a couple of moments looking at this poem. And if there are any questions you'd want to ask the poet or you'd want to ask others in the group, what are the poems? It's not that these questions may be answered. Some of them may stay with us, but just look at the poem and write some of the questions down in the chat. Please write down your questions in the chat about the poem. Um, uh, one of the questions I would like to ask is what age group do you think the, uh, this poem is getting exposed to? That will help in formulating questions. Thank you for that question. Um, poetry is something that actually often cuts across age. Uh, there are poems that may be too difficult. But I've been surprised both ways that children who are quite young respond to the rhythm or the sound of the poem, the image of the poem, an image in a poem. And this is a poem which certainly adults can relate to. And children of six, seven, eight, I would also think they could relate to. They may need help, a word like rummaging a word like draft, and they can ask what's the meaning of that. But poetry, what of the, one of the wonders of poetry is that it, it cuts across age, I think, quite often. We may look, look at it or listen to it at different levels, but something we, will, uh, we can receive from that poem, at, even at a young age, I think. Would you agree? Would others agree? Yeah, definitely. I just wanted to know in the basis of what questions we can ask. Yes. But yes. Uh, poetry is not uh, limited, but maybe the uh, scaffolding in terms of questions may be desirable. Yeah. So, Jane, uh, there one are a few. Questions. There are a few questions yes. there on the chat. Yashodra is saying, what if the door is locked and I have nothing to break it down with? Interesting. Then uh, you can question with the, uh, the fellows. Other person is saying uh, that about your recent past experiences of just exploring and daring to go beyond fears. Uh, then uh, Umema is saying that why is there an urge to Sorry, I've lost it. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
Yeah. So, uh, why is there an urge to open the door? Why is the door opening being emphasized? And uh, Vinita Paul is saying that this poem has encouraging tone to take risk and overcome the fear that withhold us. Then Nivedita is saying this is a poem which can be translated without using its essence. It's a real door or a door inside. And Anusha is asking, how can one get a picture of a picture? Do you think this poem is presenting a picture of your life? Jay, <laughs> over to you. Thank you. A lot of questions <laughs> and I can't answer all of them and I shouldn't answer all of them. Um, I think these are questions that we might answer ourselves. These are the questions that have come. Why does he keep, why does the poet keep on stressing, open the door? That's something to think about. Why, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six times he's saying, uh, go and open the door. What's, what, why is he stressing that? So some questions don't need to be answered by a teacher or a, uh, these are questions we ask ourselves, questions to be shared, questions that have different answers. There's not one answer to, uh, to this question. I think, for example, in the title, Many people captured why there was an urgency to open the door quite instinctively. So that would be another way of approaching it. Um, yes, I'm thinking of the other questions. There were so many. I, it's interesting, Nivedita said that uh, this is a poem that can be easily translated. It doesn't rhyme, actually. So often, people think that poetry means rhyming. And this poem apparently has been, was originally written in Czech, but it's been translated into more than 30 languages. It lends itself to um, tra uh, translation, partly because there are so many images in the poem, which is an image that a picture of a picture somebody mentioned. Any other image in the in the poem that strikes you yes uh, sandra pinto says that the answer will depend on how the poem talks to the reader or the listener and we need to open the door of our mind i think people are interpreting it in terms of uh, opening your mind being open minded yes Today I read, just today I read uh, Michael Morpurgo, a novelist, he, a children's writer. He said he keeps his mind like an open door for stories. I thought that was a wonderful, uh, another way of thinking about opening the door. About fullness of life is beautiful, come what may. Yes. So I think the difference between an open door and a closed door is something um, very stark, actually. Uh, and possibly another way of sharing this poem with, with children would be for, to ask them to draw what they see when they open the door, the door of the imagination. What do they see? So this is also a poem that lends itself to being uh, illustrated. Darkness ticking. That's a wonderful, I, can I just, uh, what did the, the person say about darkness ticking? Somebody said dark. A wonderful kind of um, uh, mixture of sound and and uh, a visual image of the darkness and the sound of the ticking. So this is just one poem, and you could leave this poem perhaps for a week. Let the children share their thoughts on it, the connections they see. 
what they found interesting in the poem and um, uh, perhaps to draw it, to say it in parts, to perform it. So one single poem could open up many possibilities to do things with, the, uh, with children. Anybody would like to say anything more about this particular poem or ways of using it with children? There are a few teachers here in the audience and I would uh, encourage them to please share how uh, they would uh, do it with the students. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, am yes, I audible? we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Please okay. go ahead. Uh, sometimes like uh, like I have done the uh, such kind of poem but in Hindi uh, in a government primary school but like uh, the question can be like what children do um, when they are like sad or like uh, angry so such kind of things we have done in the classroom and children do respond very uh, very authentically uh, they do respond they have responded in the past also. Thank you, uh, Varun. Actually, this poem evokes many feelings, isn't it? Uh, many poems do that. Uh, feelings of fear, excitement, surprise, um, sadness of being not able to go out. So this is a poem you could surely explore uh, feelings uh, uh, through this poem with children. Yes. Would anybody else? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to share. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. we can. Uh, it. Uh, uh, I thought it would be nice to talk about this with, I mean, uh, discuss this with older children in the face of uh, what's happening in our country. And it reminded me of a quote from Mahatma Gandhi where he says i'd like to be in a house where the window there are no walls and there are no windows uh, I, I might bring that quote and share it along with this of course i will do all the things that jane suggested and then in the end maybe i as a way of extending the uh, the idea in some sense may i read the quote or maybe i'll type it on the chat i'll do that yeah thank you but that, thanks, yeah, Shudra. That, that's another thing to ask children to connect to a poem they know, a story they know, an experience they've had. And that quote, I hadn't thought of it, actually. The wonderful thing about sharing poems is that you get so many new yes, ideas that so you haven't even points. thought of. Yes. So that would be a very relevant um, quote actually to think about this time uh, so making connections is the key I think and personal connections yeah so uh, there is uh, there are a few responses on the chat uh, like Nivedita is saying that we could ask children to translate the poem in their language and to act out the poem uh, so Samima is saying to be brave and accept whatever comes before you. Uh, Prerna is saying we could ask children to create their own lines as to what there could be behind the door. And uh, we can even ask students to do role play or to sing it to a child who is fretting or angry. And Deepa Chain is saying face the world in every situation. Yes. So role play, imagining, extending the poem uh, by thinking of your own images. I was wondering even if you could reverse, what would happen if you were going into a space rather than coming out, uh, out into the world, you were going inside. So all those possibilities, but the 
I think the common thread here is uh, connecting, relating to the poem, things you know already, listening to how others are also uh, connecting, which opens up another horizon. Yes, children can draw pictures, they can act, they can sing, uh, they can make sounds of the different things. So many possibilities in this poem, actually, to extend it. Shall we move on to the next? Um, I... Yeah, sure. Deepa? We won't spend much time with this one, but just so often uh, children think, or adults also, that a poem must rhyme. And I think in a poetry corner is somewhere where you break those kind of boundaries that you think of all kinds of poems. We'll be looking at a few of them. So poems that don't necessarily rhyme. They may have a half rhyme. They may have an internal rhyme within the line, and they may not rhyme at all. They may have a pattern, different patterns using sound of a rhythm or a particular repetition. You saw in the last poem, there was a lot of repetition, which kind of alerted you to the fact that it's a kind of a poem. Can we move to the next one? Ah, children so enjoy riddles, and riddles are actually, can be very lighthearted, but they can also be deadly serious. They're often a kind of game or contest about naming. And these kind of poems, one of them is by Tolkien. Uh, some of them are asking the question, who am I? as well as what is it? Um, maybe we can send these afterwards for you to look at and guess what the answers are. But I want to move on to another kind of a riddle, another kind of naming, which you can do with children, which is, could we switch the um, PPT off a moment? Um, in some communities, there was a tradition of naming something without using its name, and that's called kenning. And for example, a body was a bone house, the sea, a whale road, the sun, a sky candle. So I wanted to share this poem, which is a kind of a kenning, and it's called Tiger, and it's by Usha Kishore. Tiger, a color splasher, a stripe flasher, an eye gleamer, a white Sorry? Can you hear? I think somebody unmuted by mistake. Jane, please go on. A wide beamer, a sleek sprinter, a smart hunter, a lone prowler, a night walker, a deer stalker, a strong striker, a swift pouncer, a quick bouncer. So like that, you could take another animal. You, there are more actually um, uh, phrases of fierce snarler, a man hater, a meat eater, but you could take another animal, for example, an elephant. Can you think of any such phrases uh, to describe an elephant? Maybe you can put them in the chat. So 
so people are writing skyscraper mammoth elephant tusk bearer a gentle giant can we have more please gentle walker i would say tree hugger <laughs> sugar cane lover <laughs> heavy animal with biggest heart a gray geezer a gray mammal a graceful lumberer that's nice lover a food lover a loving mother reminds me of that elephant who died in kerala yeah yes placid minded a uh, memory store house they are supposed to have excellent memory yes green beaver that's nice why that's an unusual why did this is nivedita yeah a nivedita green beaver why did you think of that nivedita if you can unmute and uh, speak the one with the trunk a gentle giant water sprinkler nivedita we want to hear from you why did you select a green yeah, yeah. it came to me yes fine it came to me <laughs> i don't know why you don't have to explain <laughs> a path walker a branch breaker a jungle builder this is also nice a graceful swayer mm. river maker I think we are making a poem in the chat itself. Yes, please, somebody write it. Out. <laughs> you don't even need. We'll to... save the file uh, in the chat and uh, we'll put it up on our website. Uh, yes, uh, would... educational resource website. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to choose something as exotic as an elephant. It could be a lizard, or it could be a mongoose, or a squirrel, or a or a butterfly or a wasp but you can see how it evokes as nivedita said without thinking all most words come to your mind and it begins a poem some of the things rhyme some of them use assonance or use uh, alliteration but it doesn't have to uh, many of them created an image also branch breaker graceful swayer these are all kinds of images that contribute to a poem so that again if you had a poetry corner you gave one example say of the tiger and then you put another animal or invite children to choose their own animal or bird and children can add a list anonymously they don't need to feel they have to say who has done what and that's another way of sharing poems and bringing that uh corner alive and dynamic anyone want to comment on that exercise or any other thoughts of how you could extend it any thoughts could we have the i'm sorry we can't hear you i think you have a connection problem while we're waiting i'll just read a uh, tang twister coffee from a proper oh can anyone think of tang twisters is the can um yeah i think 
there are a few responses majestic asiatic can anybody share a tongue twister that's what she asked a cute cool cup of coffee i think that was supposed to be it. Yeah. and uh, tongue twisters in any language kaccha papad pakka papad is uh, one i remember <laughs> in hindi <laughs> if you say it yeah. old uncle oli always oils his auto <laughs> She sells sea shells on the sea shore. Yeah, that one I'm familiar with. Pakke ped par pakka papita, pakka ped ya pakka papita. Thank God I'm able to do it. <laughs> Red lorry, yellow lorry. Oh God, that is a difficult. One. Thanks, Mamta. Can you hear uh, Jane? Your voice is lagging hear? a bit. Can you repeat, Jane? Uh, this can you one. hear? Jane, your voice is lagging. Yes. Can you hear now? Yes. 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 <laughs> Good. So tongue twisters are a great way for children to just play with language. Sometimes poetry has so many uh, double meanings, inner meanings, but it's also good to provide an opportunity for children just to enjoy the sound of the language. And uh, uh, especially tongue twisters that you can repeat quickly and many times, and everyone has a good uh, laugh about it. So poetry is also for enjoying and to write them up, even for young children, is a way that they can read something they know actually, and can again connect to and say it out loud. These, there are lots of Hindi ones coming up. Uh, there have been a lot. I'm afraid if I'll read it, I'll yes. get my tongue we can twisted. Share them. <laughs> we can share them on the chat. Could yeah. we go back to the PPT? Yeah. Deepa, can you restart the PPT, please? I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah. So, Jojo. Yeah. So, Jojo ko khojo khojo Jojo ko jo Jojo ko na khojo to kho jaye Jojo. Yeah, we have your PPT. Could we move on to the next slide? Yes. So this is a not a serious poem, but I haven't met any child who doesn't enjoy it because this is a poem for action. You can have, uh, using these onomatopoeic words for children whose language may be not English. This is a wonderful way of reading, connecting to, making an action, making the sound, saying it together. So just again, as I said at the beginning, break this boundary about what children think a poem is something serious, something difficult, something uh, you can't make sense of. So this is a good poem for uh, that kind of activity. But poetry isn't only about sound, it's also about images. Could we move to the next slide? There are pictures in poems and poems in pictures. This is a Chinese proverb, which is so true, particularly of Japanese haiku, for example, which are actually basically images, but playing with sound. Uh, it creates an image in our, in our minds. Can we move on to the next one? Hmm. 
winter downpour, even the monkey needs a raincoat. Immediately, uh, uh, an image comes to your mind. And the next one? And sometimes you could, in the poetry corner, you could put a picture, like, for example, the next one, the next slide. A picture that could be a starting point for a poem. Um, there are many kinds of pictures. If you look out, all kinds of pictures from the newspaper. This is a Bengali poet, Bireshwar Sen. But a picture from the newspaper, a cartoon, something that kind of stimulates children to think, uh, to make an image and link it with words. These are just some ideas that you could do. Another way of breaking the boundary of poems is to look how the visual presentation of a poem actually is half the poem. Could we move on to the next one? So poems, get, one of them is a, is a tongue twister. The one, Lazy Jane, I will just read. Um, Lazy Jane by Shel Silverstein. Lazy, 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 lazy Jane. She wants a drink of water. So she waits and waits and waits and waits and waits for it to rain. So a completely different kind of poem that just means that children can think uh, out of the textbook, actually. We talk about out of the box, but out of the textbook. And maybe I wish some of these poems would come into the textbook instead of some of the very difficult poems that children are often presented with. So these shape poems are where where the word and the image come exact work together to create something quite different. Could we move on to the next? Um, these are some short poems, which uh, one of the reasons some children like a short uh, poem is because it's a short text. These were poems um, around the idea of singing. But as we said in the beginning, you can choose any theme to uh, kind of ask children to look out for poems, write poems, or select poems uh, to add to a display of poems on a single theme. Could we look at the next one? Uh, I think we've missed one. Could we go back? Uh, back a little bit. I think we've gone too far forward. Oh, maybe it's missing. Uh, no problem. There was a jumbled poem there into lines or into uh, words or verses, and ask the children to um, ask Maybe the it's children. this one? Can you it's have a look? I have a lot to learn. Poem. My sick to learn. My sick. No, it isn't actually. It's okay, called no, a jumbled no, poem. I must have missed it out. So that's another way of make, helping children to relate to uh, uh, poems, is actually to relook at it carefully. What would make sense in this poem? But how to, uh, could we go back one uh, slide? How to help uh, children write their own poems. Some, for some children, it's very easy. 
And for adults, sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's difficult. So writing your own poems can be easier if you don't have to think of forcing a rhyme. You collaborate with others like we saw with the elephant poem. You have space and time. That's something we didn't have today, but uh, hopefully that would be possible. You only have to share if you choose to. That's important. Sometimes a poem can be very personal. Children may not want to share it or they may feel not ready to share. To have a starting point like we saw with the picture or a prompt of a particular place or time, the playground, a graveyard, midnight, um, early morning, any of those might spark, uh, spark a poem. And also forms of poems. It shouldn't become a kind of a, a kind of clever technique, but it's surprising how sometimes a format can open up all kinds of possibilities just because it's limited. So one idea, which we will just very brief, we won't break out into groups, I'll just show you a six word poem. And the next slide shows uh, how students thought about their childhood. Can we look at the first one? The slide, not, uh, yes. The one before this. Woke this morning exhausted by adulthood. Dear older me, can we look at the, dear older me, don't look back. Um, so these are exactly six words. And uh, it's very amazing what can come. Can we move on to the next slide? The next one. I'm turning into my mother. But could we move on to the next slide? My whole life is a journey. And if you had time, children could illustrate it also. And the next one, which is a very serious poem, actually, a story, a whole story in six words. For sale, baby shoes, never worn, by Ernest Hemingway. So for the last few minutes, and there are only a few minutes, could we, anyone who would like to share a six word poem, could you put it in the chat? So you have to attempt to make a six word poem and you can put it in the chat. I think people have not attempted yet. Um, we can wait a Difficult. <laughs> Okay, I'm seeing a few. Uh, trees bending their necks for drops. Beautiful. Uh, Umema is saying, our life is an interesting story. Anusha, empty page, an empty page with thoughts infinite. Another beautiful. Can we? Yeah. Mamta is saying, beautiful colors in the sky, who knows why? 
varun gupta uh, sometimes something hope strength helps me sandra pinto is saying life's journey then there is one yashodra k who saying tomatoes juicy red strewn all over Chandrika Mathur says kitten. Uh, then Umema says the lone breezes and hollow trees. Prerna, the eyes speak a hundred words. Nivedita, clouds in the wind, stray thoughts lost. Okay, Chandrika again says kitten in my car's engine meow. Ujwal, that lone seed waits for drops of water. Life's journey still unexplored. Six words push you real hard. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting one. Ocean of emotions buried deep within. Life is beautiful, sprinkled with color. Read books, gain knowledge, build self. The thing about unknown, what's beyond it? Oh, Jennifer. Yeah, L library reopens. Children eager, books fly. Beautiful. The unfinished book of one's life. Varun, again. Uh, beauty, beauty, nature, chill, childless fullness, everywhere around. Archana, two eyes, never slept gazing at stars my god i think we now we are having a flood of uh, poems <laughs> sleep sustains me alone at last jasneet nobody can stop me except me helping hands we are more of marks i think it was mass Struggles, struggles to stop you start. Okay. So what do you have to say, Jane, to all of these? <laughs> I'm amazed how, uh, I mean, I don't need any words, actually. <laughs> I think this outpouring of poetry just goes to show that we have to trust our voices, trust other people's voices to actually make a poetry corner come alive. I was very nervous of doing this in the virtual mode, but actually it's been great. And thank you all for sharing so wonderfully ideas that I certainly hadn't thought of. <laughs> Any yeah. comments or questions? Just I, we've almost come to the end actually, isn't it? I think, uh, but if you would like to write or make a welcome. So Pallavi is asking, what do, you, what do you feel is an essential quality of a poem that prose cannot explore or a prose misses? Well, somebody trans, uh, defined a poem as something that can't be put in prose. That is, uh, that's one way of looking at a poem. But actually the borderline between poetry and prose is quite blurred. There's prose that is poetry and lyrical, and there can be poems, so-called poems, that are just uh, meaningless jingles. So it's really the essence of what a poem can speak to you with uh, bringing an image to mind uh, in a very economical way, in the best order, uh, with the best where sound and image and thought come together very concisely. I think the concise and economic aspect of a poem is very important. Being wordy is, doesn't make a good poem. 
So I think we should stop there. And thanks again to everybody for participating so fully. Thank you so much, Jane, for such a wonderful and engaging uh, uh, workshop with all of us, where we uh, not only heard so many interesting poems, uh, but we also got to make so many uh, poems. And, and I think- I, I the... have a request. Yeah, sure. Uh, sorry. Um, first of all, uh, we are great fan of Miss Jane Sahi because like organic language development, like in her Sita school, and how, uh, like we have read that uh, the older children make story story books and the younger children read those books, right? <laughs> so like I am working in a government primary school in Delhi. So we also try to learn uh, similarly and like from Sylvia Ashton Warner. So I have a request that if uh, Miss Jane Sahi, ma'am, and this can organize a short-term course on, uh, on charges based, uh, whatever, so we are, I'm sure, uh, like me, there are many educators who are looking uh, for organic language development, uh, especially in a underprivileged context, and also like in uh, elite private school also, uh, language is language. So uh, this is my one of the requests, if such a course can be designed and planned. And thanks to you, ma'am. Uh, today, I feel very, uh, very happy to see you and interact with you. Thank you, Varun. And you made an important point. The yeah, poetry yeah. is for everybody. There's something very democratic about poetry. Yes, and it's something that everyone can participate in. And in the past, we had uh, uh, art. Took a session with arts and language and story building. It was also a wonderful mm -hmm. session. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, uh, Varun, uh, for your uh, comments. And uh, so do uh, put down your comments and feedback on the feedback form link that I have shared in the chat. You can uh, scroll up and see that link. And please do, uh, if you want, Varun, if you want such kind of course, you should write that in the feedback form itself. Uh, sure, and sure. I must... Uh, thank Jane uh, once again for such a wonderful uh, uh, workshop with us. This uh, School Synergy Workshop series is a series that we have started actually last year. And this is a space that we want to create where uh, teacher educators, teachers, uh, student teachers, um, they all come together and uh, are able to share ideas which can be implemented in practice in the classrooms. And now since the classroom space has also moved to a virtual mode, uh, we thought that uh, continuing this effort in a virtual uh, mode and uh, interacting uh, with teachers every week on different, con uh, give different topics, English, mathematics, science, uh, ICT, and uh, getting to hear from teachers about what their own experiences of doing it with students, it would be uh, really fruitful for all the educators and uh, developing our own knowledge about practice a little bit uh, more deeper. So uh, we all uh, uh, look forward to uh, the uh, welcoming you all once again to the next week's uh, workshop uh, series. You can, uh, we will be, uh, sending an email to you for the next workshop and also we'll be announcing it on our website uh, on educational uh, resource and center website um, at center for education innovation and action research so varun gupta is asking can you please the confirm the author of the tiger poem uh, osha kishore it's from a book called Masala. I will write it on the chat. Yeah. And I'm even planning to uh, download this chat as a file and also uh, put it in, in form in some form on the website itself because I think the chat itself has a lot of wonderful uh, responses from all of you, which we would like to see. Okay, uh, so I'll uh, we end the session here. I'm just here for a few more minutes. Um, and uh, 
you all can fill the feedback form and submit it just in case somebody has not done that but uh, okay bye for now and we'll see you again next week saturday 3 pm bye jane thanks a lot bye bye jane thanks so much for carrying on when it kept <laughs> going off and contributing so well <laughs> oh, i enjoyed it thoroughly i <laughs> i am not a, a english or a, a poetry person but i really enjoyed this session today really really enjoyed it and what you said is absolutely true poetry is really democratic <laughs> and everyone enjoys it uh ruti would it be a good idea to share some of these poems that you could send out to people yeah uh, we can uh, also uh, share this ppt on our website yes, along with yes, the that yeah yes, that, th yes. that can be done and uh, if, we'll see if it is possible to also send a um, email to all the participants um, uh, in form of a ppt if we can email it to all of them we'll try yes yeah. but yes, we'll definitely do that on do the that. website yes thank you jane Bye bye and thank you. Thank you. Do we end the session now, Ruchi? Ah, uh, yeah, we can end it, and you can stop the recording also. Thank you. Yeah.